So in our chapter 2, in our unit 2, uh, we will tackle all about um, evolution. Now, um, organic evolution, it explains the diversity of living organisms as, as the historical outcome of gradual change from previously existing forms. Now, um, before uh, Darwin, there are many theories, or there are many theories, uh, mga beliefs, no, na pinanginiwala noon ng, ng, ng tao. So, so, before Darwin, there was no uh, set theory. So, they, they based their, their theories mainly in mythology and, and superstition. Now, um, some mythology, uh, people describe the world uh, remaining constant after a short period of creation. So, there is a period where the world is not um, uh, changing or it, it does not undergo uh, change. However, uh, some people approach the idea that uh, nature has a long history of continuous and irreversible change. So, ang iba naman na niniwala na ang, na ang, ang mundo is uh, tuloy-tuloy ang pagbabago and yung change na yun, hindi yun na, na, na nababalik sa dati. Now, um, there are early Greeks that studied evolution like um, Xenophanes, uh, Empedocles, and, and Aristotle. And they studied uh, fossils and they recognized fossils as evidence for former life. And that they believed had been destroyed by natural catastrophe. So, kaya daw nagkaroon ng, ng fossils inside rocks, nag, uh, nagkaroon ng fossils inside, um, uh, within um, the ground, no, under the ground, and because of the uh, forces of nature. Now, despite their intellectual uh, inquiry, no, so the, they uh, failed to establish um, to establish uh, an evolutionary concept. So, wala talaga silang na-establish na real theory. But in mid-1700s, si Archbishop Usher, uh, he, he established the Earth's creation at 4004 before Christ. So, naisip niya siguro, uh, because of the fossil records, naisip niya na matanda yung 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 earth but then si Georges Buffon in also uh, in mid 1700s uh, he established um, the the idea of changes in species no he stressed the influence of environment on the modifications of animal form so because of that he extended the age of the earth to 70,000 years Now, um, so yung unang naset na theory ng evolution is by uh, Jean Baptiste de Lamarck. Okay. So, si Jean Baptiste de Lamarck, he came up with the first written theory of evolution. So, yun talaga yung kauna-unahang scientific explanation of evolution. So, in, in late 1700s and early 1800s, he proposed that uh, inheritance uh, uh, inheritance of acquired characteristics. And uh, by this um, by this theory, it states that organisms uh, for for them uh, for them to survive in their environment, uh, they acquire adaptations, and these adaptations can be passed uh, to their offspring by 
heredity. And uh, this uh, theory of Jean Baptiste de Lamarck is said to be transformational. Transformational because it claims that as individual organisms transform their characteristics uh, through the use and disuse of parts, no? heredity makes corresponding adjustments to produce evolution. So, habang nagkakaroon ng adaptations yung mga organisms, yung organisms na yun, so iba-iba yung adaptations nila, and these adaptations are passed on to their children, to their offspring. So, ma nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, variation. So, it will produce evolution. Uh, now, itong kasalamarkism in, in this transformational theory, uh, nire-reject na ito ngayon kasi mer meron na tayong mga genetic studies that show uh, traits acquired by an organism during its lifetime uh, such as yung, yung mga muscles natin, ayan, uh, ano pa ba, sa bilis ng takbo, hindi yan na inherit ng ating offspring. Rather, naka-acquire natin yan through training, through exercise, and all. Yan. So, in this slide, we can see the, the, the theory of Jean Baptiste de Lamarck. No? So, nung una daw, um, giraffes have uh, short necks. And because uh, the trees are, are getting taller, the trees are growing, no? so they have to adapt for the, uh, to their environment para, sa, para makakain sila. So, ang ginagawa nila, they stretch their necks. So, as the trees grow taller, they are also uh, stretching their necks, making, them, uh, making their necks longer. So, itong, so hanggang ngayon is, ayun na, naka-adapt na siya sa kanyang environment and uh, napasa niya yung acquired characteristic na yun, yung, yung long necks na yun, yung uh, to their offspring. So, ganun yung kanyang uh, theory. So, after uh, Lamarck, so dumating naman ngayon si uh, Sir Charles Lyell. Okay. So, si Sir Charles Lyle, he is a British geologist that established the theory of uniformitar uh, uniformitarianism. So, ang um, uniformitarianism uh, encompasses two important principles that uh, guide scientific study of the history of nature. The first principle is that um, laws of chemistry and physics remain the same throughout history. Kung ano yung law ng chemistry dati and physics at kung ano yung ngayon is it's the same. The same. Now, the second principle is that um, past uh, geological events occurred by natural processes are similar to those observed today. So, kung nagkaroon ng lindol dati, syempre nagkaroon din ngayon. So, that's um, uh, that's the the, the 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 uh what do you call the opinion or the point of view of Sir Charles Lyell. Now, uh, si Lyell, it's uh, he showed that uh, natural forces after over long periods of time could explain the formation of fossil bearing rocks. So, because of this observation, uh, it led him to conclude that the Earth's age must be measured in millions rather yung sa thousands ni, ni George's Buffon. Now, um, before we tackle the theory of uh, uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, let us discuss first on how Darwin came up with his um, with his uh, theory. Okay. So, we have this um, the uh, voyage no? Uh, the voyage of the HMS Beagle. So, HMS means Her Majesty's Ship. Okay. Now, um, see si John 
uh, Henlo, uh, Henslow, which is a professor by that time, no, he invited or he asked Darwin to serve as a naturalist on a mapping expedition. So by that, uh, uh, that time, Darwin was 23 years old. The journey began on December 27, 1831 and uh, lasted for five years. So that ends in 1836. And so the goal of the voyage was to survey South America and the Pacific. No? So ang direction nila ay paganyan. Para pa i, uh, ano, paganyan ang direction nila. So um, during the voyage, uh, the Beagle stopped at many ports. Kung makikita nyo dyan, ang dami nilang, ang dami nilang pinuntahan, ang dami nilang, uh, ang tawag nito, parang ang dami lang stopovers, no? And, uh, yung stopovers nila sa, along South America, along Australia, and the Pacific. So, dito yung banda. Now, um, Darwin, during that voyage, made collections of fossils and, and uh, observed the flora and fauna of the areas. And he noticed uh, na there are many similarities between different areas at yung species, ano, yung organisms doon sa, sa areas na yun. Now, this voyage became one of the most important Important voyages of the 19th uh, century. Okay, so and also this voyage gave uh, Darwin ample of opportunities to explore tropical rainforests, uh, yung fossil beds, uh, yung volcanic peaks of South uh, peaks of South America, and syempre yung mga corals ng, ng, ng South Pacific. So in in mid September of 1835, the Beagle arrived at the Galapagos Islands, uh, which is a volcanic archipelago, na mahikita doon sa along the equator. And now, uh, Galapagos uh, Island is, uh, Island is named after the large uh, tortoises that inhabit. Uh, inhabit them. So, ang tawag sa mga tortoises doon sa islands and ay Galapago. Okay? Now, um, so yun nga, uh, in Galapagos Islands, he made observations of yon giant tortoises, uh, marine iguanas, mockingbirds, and uh, finches. So, and um, some of his, uh, some of Darwin's most Revolutionary ideas came from his observations of this species, yung plants and animal life on the uh, on these uh, islands. So Darwin stayed in in Galapagos Islands for five weeks. So all of these observations changed his thinking and led to the beginnings of uh, the theory of his theory on evolution. And also, um, Darwin noticed na ay, yung, yung isang ano pala, yung isang governor doon sa Galapagos uh, Islands, uh, sa isang ay uh, isang island doon sa Galapagos Islands, he said to Darwin na magkaiba yung shape ng tortoises ng sa ibang parts ng islands, sa iba't ibang parts ng island. And Darwin noticed na there are other differences. No, Darwin explained that um, tortoises from drier regions have uh, longer necks. No, so this um, yung sa kung, kung drier regions ibig sabihin ang vegetation doon is is uh, parang konti lang no sparse ang vegetation and these tortoises needed to have long necks so that they could reach higher no to get food now in in wetter regions naman in wetter regions naman hindi kailangan yung long necks so nag mas nagso-survive yung shorter neck yung tortoises with shorter necks 
in wetter regions. Now, um, when Darwin So, uh, when Darwin went to South, uh, South America, ayan, from Galapagos, yung nakarating na siya ng, ng South America, parang uh, he noticed na parang yung, yung, yung tortoises dito sa, sa South America at yung tortoises ng Galapagos Islands uh, were quite similar to each other. So, so, Darwin reasoned that the island forms uh, were derived from a few ancestral animals that managed to travel from the mainland of, of South America papunta doon sa Galapagos. But then, kung mapapansin nyo sa map, uh, wala namang land connection, no? walang connection ang, ang South America at saka Galapagos. Wala namang bridge. No? So, um uh, so one modern hypothesis na na, na, na uh, one modern hypothesis hypothesis was developed na nagsi state na ang tortoises na yun is parang sumakay or sumama siya doon sa mga sa mga plants na na, na, na nagfo-float no sa mats of vegetation na regularly nagbe-break uh, na na nagbe-break free from uh, river banks, from coastal river banks during storms. So, kaya from South America, so makai sila doon sa mats of vegetation at na punta sila sa Galapagos Islands. And without predators on the island, the tortoises uh, gradually increased in number. Now, aside from the tortoises, uh, another observation ni Darwin na talagang nagpatibay ng kanyang theory of evolution ay yung uh, sa nakita niyang um, uh, na, sa nakita niyang uh, similarities no or adaptations ng ng finches so um, long ago as 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 per Darwin no ang finch daw yan, ang finches daw ay originally seed eaters but as they as they spread out as they inhabit new in environments no they adopt their they, they they adopted their beaks no they change their beaks para maka makakain sila so if the areas are 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 ano yan, are mainly ayan, inhabited by cactus and uh, ang, vegeta ang vegetation nila ay mostly cactus. So, yung finch na yun, nag-a-adapt siya, i-a-adapt nag siya na, na kanyang beak. Kung para mabuhay, no? ibabaguhin niya yung form ng beak niya para mabuhay. And uh, when there are, where the areas are, are rich in insect, insects, no? so, yung finch na yun, nag-adapt din para mabuhay siya, para uh, insect lang talaga yung makain niya. So, there are also finches na fruit eaters. Okay. So, Darwin now, uh, pumunta siya sa, sa Cape Verde Islands. Ayan. So, from, from sa South America Ayan, from here, so bumalik siya papuntang Cape Verde Islands. Ayan. So Darwin compared the flora and fauna of the Galapagos Islands and the Cape Verde uh, Islands. So he noted, he noted that, um, he noted that the Galapagos Islands and the Cape Verde Islands were similar in climate and topography. Pero they 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 uh, ano to? They vastly differ in 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 plants and animals that inhabited the islands. And all of these observations, uh, all of these um, observations led 
to conclu- uh, to for him to conclude that life originated in South America na nag-spread and and these species adapted to each uh, different climate and um, environment no and also this observation uh, convinced him that animals change over time and and it really took the remaining years of 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 life of darwin's life to formulate and document his I, I, uh, ideas you know? so the, uh, okay now uh, yung yung entire voyage na yon ang sinabi yung entire uh, observation niya doon sa galapagos at saka yung sa cape bird uh, sinasabi niya na those are the origin for all his views no? now um the beagle returned to to um to england on october 2 1836 and darwin conducted the uh the rest of his research in england and on uh in 1859 he released on the origin of species so ito na yung lahat ng naging observations niya sa kanyang voyage so it was uh, released 20 years later so mahaba talaga yung kanyang pag-aaral but um, within doon sa sa years na habang ginagawa niya yung on the spe- on the origin of species he published um, five volumes on zoology of the beagle voyage ayan and, and after uh, releasing on the origin of species may mga na-release din siyang mga mga books no yung fertilization of orchids the variation of plants and animals under domestication uh, the uh, descent of man and numerous other works so ganun ka tutok si Charles Darwin sa kanyang um ang tawag nito sa kanyang research now now Darwin's evolutionist uh, evolutionary theory has five major components so we have perpetual change um, common descent uh, multiplication of species gradualism and natural selection now uh, the theory of the theory of perpetual change states that the world is neither constant nor perpetually or continuously cycling but it is steadily undergoing a reversible change no the world is constantly in a state of change and that change is irreversible o hindi na uh, nababalik no and um uh the fossil record uh is the evidence of perpetual change no the fossil record demonstrates perpetual change in the continuing fluctuation of animal form and diversity. Now, so um, in perpetual change, uh, in perpetual change, uh, as the Earth's environment change over time, the species are also shifting. Okay, they are also. Um, changing uh, according to their uh, environment. Yeah. Next theory is a uh, common uh, descent. Now Darwin's theory of common descent states that uh, all organisms, all organisms, descend from a common ancestor through a branching of genealogical lineages okay so he proposed that all plants all plants and animals came from a single ancestor so iisa lang ang kanilang pinagmulan so this this um tracing you know, this tracing of common ancestor is what we call uh, phylogeny so phylogeny and according to, to Darwin's theory, we should be able to trace their, uh, we should be able to trace our lineage back to a single-celled microbe that lived 
long ago. So, ang sabi sa ano sa uh, sa theory sa other theories, no, ang our ang ating common ancestor ng lahat ng organisms ay tinatawag na uh, tinatawag na luka. Yan, luka or last unknown common ancestor. Last unknown common ancestor. Okay. Um, in 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 tracing our uh, common ancestor, our our uh, what do you call that? Our lineage, no. Um, we uh, observe the similarities we have to that ancestor. So, ang tawag dun sa similarities na yun ay homology or uh, morphological homology. No, Morpho Homology refers to uh, similar organs in different uh, species that arose from a common, uh, common organ and have just been modified to fit the niche of the animal. So, let's have an example. So, in this one, makikita natin na na, wait, okay. So, in this one, we have common ancestor. So, our common ancestor is a cell, okay? So, that cell, um, oh, what, um, by the way, this, uh, this figure is known as phylogenetic tree or, uh, Cladogram. Okay, so that cell uh, started to divide and they started to replicate uh, yung DNA. Okay, so nagkaroon ng, ng anong tawag nito? Dumami na yung cells. So, na-develop yung uh, blastula. Okay, so a sphere of cell, a ball of cells. Now, sa blastula, from blastula, na-develop ngayon ang insects. So, insects are invertebrates. No? And then, um, for them, the insects started to adapt to its environment, to its habitat. So, nagkaroon ngayon siya ng mga bones, no? ng spinal cord. So, meron ta nagkaroon tayo ng, ng vertebrates. Okay? Nagkaroon sila ng vertebrae. So, doon na nagsimula ang development of fish. Okay? So, the the homology in insect between in the insects and fish is yung uh, they both developed from blastula okay ang pinagkaibahan nila ay nagkaroon na ng vertebrae ang fish now from fish siya nag nag adapt nag nag evolve no so na nag ano nagkaroon ng tetrapod so tetrapod means they have four limbs Okay. So, nagkaroon ng limbs itong ating fish. Wala, wala na siyang tail, wala siyang ng, ng fins. No? So, tetrapod. At doon na nag-develop uh, ang, ang amphibians. So, an example is yung frog. May four limbs siya, tetrapod. No? So, the homology between the fish and the amphibian, the frog, is they are both vertebrates. And the homology between uh, uh, on, on these three organisms, insect, fish, amphibians, either both developed from blastula. Okay? So, meron pa rin silang common trait. Okay? May homology sila. Now, from the amphibians, na, uh, yung, yung frog, since di ba pag naglilay siya ng eggs, sa water lang yung eggs, no? Now, nagkaroon ng amniotic egg. So, ibig sabihin, uh, uh, meron siyang, ang, ang mga uh, organisms na may amniotic egg ay tinatawag na amniots. Okay? Amniots. A-M-N-I-O-T-S. So, they are characterized by having an egg equipped with an amnion. Okay? Yung amnion, it is an adaptation na na, na that, that enables organisms to lay eggs on land oh, o kaya i-retain yung fertilized egg within their bodies, within the mother. Okay? So, nung nagkaroon ng amniotic egg, ayan, nag-develop na yung 
birds, 'di ba? Pag nag nag ang tawag nito, yung eggs naman ay nasa sa, nas, na, na-develop sa loob, no? Okay. So, ayan, the amphibians and the birds ay both tetrapod. Ayan, yung yung upper limbs ng ng frog ay naging wings, okay? Now, yung birds at itong insects, fish and amphibians, so they have the, their their homology is that they develop from blastula. The fish and the birds uh, are both vertebrates. Okay? Now the amphibians and the birds are both tetrapods. Now from from birds, yung feathers ngayon ay nag-adapt at naging hair. Okay? So this is where the prosimians evolved. Okay? So nagkaroon na ng prosimians. And as you can see, birds and prosimians, they both have amniotic egg. Amphibians, birds, prosimians, they are uh, tetrapod. Fish, two prosimians, they are vertebrates. Insects, two prosimians, they all develop from blastula. So they all have a common trait. Okay. Next, from prosimian, I, uh, parang nag-adapt sila to their environment and they started to walk using only two feet at tama, parang two, uh, two limbs. So, naging bipedal sila. And this is where the humans started to evolve. Okay, so ganon. Uh, as you can see, prosimians humans, they both have hair. Ayan. Birds and humans, they, they are both amniots. Amphibians and humans, they are tetrapods. No, meron silang four limbs. A fish and humans, they are both vertebrates. And insects and humans are both developed from blastula. So, lahat yan sila ay parang uh, may lection sa isa't isa. Now, uh, Darwin, he used this uh, morphological homologies in his work. So, yung, yung, yung uh, observations niya, so, ginawa niya ito sa, uh, parang ganyan, pinaliwanag niya ito sa kanyang, sa kanyang book na The Descent of Man and Selection in a Relation to Sex. So, he used anatomical comparisons of man to apes to, su to suggest a common ancestral lineage. Now, um, the uh, effect of common uh, descent is the multiplication of species through evolutionary time. So first, what uh, let us define species. Now, species is a group of organisms that can reproduce with one another in nature and produce fertile offspring. So, me, so um, uh, side note, there is no such thing as, as species, okay? So, species siya. Kahit isa lang yan, species yan ang tawag. Okay? Now, Darwin believed that species separated by some geographic features was the, the pressure needed for new species to be produced. And also, um, for an, an organism, for a new species to, to be known as, uh, for a species to be known as a new species, they must have reproductive com compatibility. So, dapat nakakapag-reproduce sila. Okay. So, the, the, the fourth uh, uh, ano yan, component of Darwin's theory is gradualism. So, in gradualism, it suggests that changes occur over numerous generations and vary uh, and vary, this is letter A, and, uh, and varies slowly. No? So, there is no sudden changes. So, pa-unti-unti pa lang yung pagbabago. No? Now, there are two types of gradualism. Now, we have population gradualism and the phenotypic gradualism. Population gradualism are those traits, uh, reverse the traits that become established in a population by increasing their frequency in the population. Okay? So, we, parang more, ang population gradualism is more on the frequency of that trait. Okay? Now, for uh, second, we have the phenotypic 
gradualism. In phenotypic uh, gradualism, new traits, even those traits that are that are very obvious, you know, are produced in a series of small steps. Now, um, so Darwin's fifth major statement is the natural selection. So he said that natural selection is the guiding force of evolution. Now, Charles Darwin had had no knowledge of modern genetic concepts and therefore uh, he had no knowledge of the genetic principles that are the basis of, ev of evolutionary theory as it exists today. There are four basic tenets of evolution by natural selection as, as, as uh, defined by Darwin. So first we have um, all organisms have a far greater reproductive potential that is ever realized. So that means there are more individuals that are produced each generation that can survive. Second, variation occurs among organisms within populations and the variation is heritable. So it means there are no two organisms exactly alike. So variations arise from, from a, a several sources. You know, we have mutation, genetic recombination, um, and random fer fertilization. Again, mutation, genetic recombination, and, fer and random fertilization. So there, so parang very seldom lang na ang, ang, ang dalawang tao ay mag, uh, mag, mag, magkaparehas talaga. Now, uh, this variation no, that exists among individuals are heritable. No? So, na, na mamana. Okay. Napapasa, I mean. Now, three, uh, the third tenet is natural resources are limited and those individuals with heritable traits better suited to the environment will survive. So, yung may mga, yung individuals that na nanamamatay ay yung may mga traits na na that that make survival and successful reproduction less likely you know and so mas mabubuhay talaga yung yung tinto kung sino yung may malakas na na ano na na pangatawan no? yung mga may mga adaptive traits yan they are most likely to reproduce successfully um, fourth and uh, is when reproductive isolation occurs, new species will form. Now, over many generations, the sorting of variation by selection produces new species and new adaptations. Now, um, population geneticists, you know, they study evolution as a change in the genetic composition of populations. You know, hindi sila sa sa panglabas na mga sa panglabas na pagbabago. Okay. So more on the sa, sa genes. Okay. So they discovered the principles by which genetic properties of populations change through time. We have first we have the microevolution. Okay? But before we define microevolution, let's have let's have um, a, a few few terms, no. So first, a uh, genotype. So genotype is the genetic makeup of an individual. Okay, that's so. Lahat lahat na ng genes na yon. Okay. Next, we have gene pool. So gene pool is the summary of all the genotype of a population. Okay, so ang gene pool kung nare in a community uh, sa 100 katao, yung genetic makeup nila, yung genotype nila, yung genetic makeup nila, pinagsama-sama, so that's gene pool. Uh, next, we have allele. So allele is a version of a gene. Uh, for example, I have an allele for brown skin, and and my 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 mother has an allele of white skin. So that that is a version of a gene. So a allele creates diversity. Okay. 
Now, allele frequency. Allele frequency is how often an allele occurs in a gene pool relative to the other alleles for the same gene. So, ganun siya. Gaano ba kadalas ang ang pag ang uh, ang alil na oh, so gaano ba ka hindi man kadalas eh kadami yung alil ng white skin doon sa community ng brown skin okay so ganon now microevolution microevolution pertains to evolutionary changes in frequencies of different allelic forms of genes within population so it must Ang, ang iniisip ng ang iniisip. So, ang microevolution, it focuses more on the genetic makeup or, or, or the, the genes or the traits, the frequency of traits in a population. Now, um, there are factors that cause allele frequencies to change and they are called forces of evolution. So, first, we have genetic drift. No, genetic drift happens uh, when a random change in allele frequency that uh, occurs uh, occurs in a small population. So, so uh, for example, uh, yeah. So this is a small number. Uh, there are three couples. No, there are three um, couples, and and um. And these couples ay nanganak lang ng tag-iisa, no? So, the, the allele frequencies of the parents, nangyari mga yellow-haired sila. So, yung allele frequency ng yellow-haired dito sa parents is mataas. Pero pagdating doon sa offsprings nila, so, aling, ang allele frequency nila ay bababa, no? Dito, anim sila na yellow-haired. Dito, tatlo lang sila na yellow-haired. Now, so that's genetic uh, drift. Now genetic drift, okay? So genetic drift um, occur lang siya uh, under two special. So we have bottleneck effect, bottleneck effect and founder effect. So yung bottleneck effect it occurs when a population suddenly gets as uh, much smaller. So yung parang pag Mabilis lang naman maubos ang isang population kung merong catastrophe, no? May may floods, may mga ganyan, and sunog, di ba? Pag sa, pag, pag sa forest, no? Forest fires. And also, yung disease, okay? Yung pandemic, in, uh, epidemics, ano, no? But a genetic drift is a small population, some small population na naman siya, so more on epidemics and endemics lang. Now, uh, for example, sa bottleneck effect, uh, we have this yeah, yellow-haired, uh, for example, na lang, um, uh, koalas, okay? Yung koalas, ayan siya. Itong koalas, uh, di ba sa forest, tas nagkaroon ng forest fire, at isa lang ang nakasurvive, okay? So, the, the allele frequencies of the survivor may be different from those of the original population. So, that's a bottleneck effect. Next, we have the founder effect. So, founder effect uh, occurs when a few individuals start or found a new population. No? Um, so for example, this one. Okay. So, in a family of... Uh, uh, a black bear. Okay, so nga, black bear ito. So, in a family of black bear, kasi yung black bear na yun, they started a new population. So, iba na naman yung allele frequencies nila. Or, a new population, o parang, parang mag-perform sila ng bagong population. Or, back, or pwede ding pumasok sila sa population ng mga brown bears. So, yung, yung frequency, yung allele frequency ng brown bears doon sa population ng anong uh, allele frequency of black bears doon sa population ng brown uh, brown bears so di ba mas ma mababa kaysa doon sa original frequency nila so that's um genetic drift and by chance yung allele frequencies of the founders ito 
may be different from the alleles of the of the allele frequencies of the population they left. So next we have mutation. Next force is mutation. So mutation happens when there is a change in a DNA sequence. So mutation creates new genetic a genetic variation in the gene pool. And this is how all new alleles um, first arrive arri uh, arise. Now, in sexually reproducing species like mammals, like, like us, you know, the mutations that matter for evolution are those that occur in our sex cells, in our gametes. Because th these mutations can be passed on to our children. Okay. Next is the gene flow. So, gene flow occurs when individuals move into or out of a population. So, for example, we have here this a rat so we have a black rat no okay now we have uh, so, uh, for example this one in a family of triangle again in a family of triangle and a family of circles so this triangle decided to move the on sa family ng ng circles so yung allele frequencies ng, ng triangle is different from their original allele frequency. And also, dito sa, sa pinuntahan ng, ng, triangle, ng triangle, dito sa, at sa allele frequency of the circle, so iba din siya, mag-iiba din siya kesa doon sa original na allele frequency nila. So, that's gene flow. So, pwede siyang bumalik. Ayan, pagbabalik na naman yung, yung, yung triangle doon sa family niya. So, magbabago na naman. As, uh, the same on the, in the family of circles. Okay. Next is uh, the fourth and final force of evolution is the natural selection. So, natural selection occurs when there are differences in fitness among members of a population. So, this is basically survival of the fittest, okay? So, for example, we have here a family of lions, okay? So, big triangles represent um, stronger lions, and, and the small uh, triangles uh, represent, represent weaker lions, okay? So, sino ba ang mas mabubuhay? Siyempre, kung sino yung mas malakas, they will be able to adapt to their environment and uh, um, and uh, parang it would make them uh, reproduce more. Okay? So, kukunti ngayon yung kukunti yung alien frequency ng weaker lions at mag-change din yung frequency ng stronger lions. So, that's natural. Okay. So, next we have a macro Evolution. So macroevolution is is an evolution that occurs at or above the level of the species. No? So pang medyo pangkalahata na ito. So microevolution is a result of microevolution taking place over many generations. And one of the main topics in macroevolution is how new species arise. So the process by which uh, new species arise is called speciation. Okay. Now, um, for a new species to arise, some members of a species must become reproductively isolated from the rest of the species. So it means they can no longer interbreed with the members of the species. No? Hindi sila uh, nagkakaroon ng sexu sexual contact with each other, yung two species na yun. Now, there, is, uh, there are three main types of speciation. We have the allopatric um, speciation. So, allopatric speciation uh, denotes the evolution of reproductive barriers between ge uh, geographically separated populations to generate new species. So, this kind of speciation arises because of geographical separation of two species that could interbreed. Okay? So, so there are two species. Uh, yung, yung geographical, geographical separation may 
it may be caused by yung a river, pwedeng pwedeng ocean, pwedeng lands, okay? So pwedeng ganun yung kanilang uh, cause of uh, separation. And yung two separated groups, no, they adapt and they evolve no sa kanilang sa kanilang uh, sa kanilang areas and eventually forming new species. Next, uh, speciation is the sympatric speciation. Uh, so, sympatric speciation refers to a speciation process when two groups of identical species lived in identical geographical areas and they evolved in such a way that they could no longer interbreed. So, in, in a country, kanyari, in a country, so, diba, um, there are different uh different what you know, cities, different provinces, and different provinces means that they have also different environment, different um different uh nito, climates, different topographies. Diba? So by occupying different habitats or different niches, okay, members of a species acquire enough adaptations to create reproductive barrier so hindi hindi na sila nag interbreed they don't um contact sexually parang ganun so next we have the parapatric speciation so this occurs when new species evolve in contiguous yet spatially segregated habitats so ito ang parapatric is the intermediate between allopatric and sympatric so there is an environmental change that splits a species into two environmentally distinct parts. But in parapatric, no, in, pa in parapatric and like sympatric, um, in parapatric, the, the, the species, um, they, the two species, they can continuously interbreed. No? They maintain a zone of contact and they do not do not stop, they do not cease the exchange of genes completely. Okay, now let's have an example. Yeah. So first, yeah, I, ito muna, a summary of the situation. So allopatric, geographical barrier, they can no longer interbreed. St. Patrick, this, there is a genetic polymorphism. Uh, ibig sabihin, they are, are the, same, uh, the same species. Now, the same species, but then nagkaroon ng adaptations with their environment that also uh, that also uh, resulted to uh, a, ch a change in their DNA. Okay, so nagkaroon din ng reproductive barrier. Uh, para Patrick, there is a par partial spatial isolation, but they maintain a zone of um, zone of contact. Okay, for example, this one, um, this fish uh, is uh, leaves, uh, this fish, uh, pork fish, uh, para, 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 para silang pork fish, um, but this one, ay dito siya nakatira sa may Caribbean Sea, and this one naman ay naka, nakatira siya sa Pacific Ocean. So, and they are geographically isolated, okay, I, uh, separated, I mean. So, yung separation na yun is caused by this land, the land of yung parang Panama, okay? So, they can no longer interbreed with each other. Next, we have this one for, uh, uh, this one is an example of sympatric um, speciation. So, for example, we have these flies that breed uh, and lay their eggs in, 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 red apple but then one of them um uh, accidentally or whether they in ano parang ato ito naglay naglay siya ng egg sa green apple so yung larvae na yon na nag-develop into a fly no is already adapted on the green apple kaya lahat ng mga naging ano niya yung descendants niya descendants niya is doon na sa green apple. So, yan. They, they have 
uh, different, ang tawag niyan, different habitat, but in the same area, okay? And they could no longer interbreed. Lastly, we have this for parapatric situation. So, this uh, uh, beetles. And these beetles are different species, uh, but then um, they also live in different habitats, differ different environments, but then they remain um, I mean, they still okay, they, so they still uh, interbreed with each other, uh, producing more, ayan, more hybrid. Okay? So, mas halo-halo yung genes nila. So, that's all for our, um, for our organic evolution.